there is no greater skill that can be acquired or constantly worked at that has a bigger impact in our personal and professional life than the ability to build instant rapport with others, whether they be an acquaintance, customer, coworker, or total stranger. Everyone you come in contact with has an invisible sign above their head that reads, make me feel important. Studies constantly show that the happiest people are the ones with the most meaningful relationships. Yet, developing relationships and building rapport is not taught anywhere. And too often, we can be guilty of treating others we come in contact with as a transaction or as a private audience to up them, update them about our day and what's happening. Totally missing an opportunity to make a connection that could potentially enrich both lives. As a result of being in the midst of the touchscreen era, we have significantly less face-to-face -face interactions and our people's skills are eroding. However, nothing will ever replace looking directly in someone else's eyes and making a meaningful connection. How many of you agree with the following statement? People don't listen with the intent of understanding. They listen with the intent of replying. Yeah. Scientists studied the human brain and found that it took it a minimum of 0.6 seconds to formulate a response to something said to it. Then they studied hundreds of conversations and found the average gap between people talking was 0.2 seconds. How can people be responding in one third the time the human brain will allow? Obviously, people have their responses ready long before the other person is done talking. And it's human nature for us to be preoccupied and consume what's happening in our world. However, if we want to make a connection, our goal must be on having the other person leave feeling better for having interacted with us by putting the majority of the focus on them. When we're not anxious to tell our story and we can be present with someone, that's when the magic happens. Jim Rohn once said, the greatest gift you can give anyone is the gift of your attention. So by a show of hands, how many people in here feel that you're pretty good at building rapport with others? All right. Now here's the thing. Just because you know someone's name or you recognize their face doesn't mean you've built a rapport. Here's how you prove You've built a rapport after having a conversation with someone. You have to know two or more things of their Ford. F-O-R-D. Family. Are they married? Do they have kids? How old are their kids? Occupation. What do they do for a living? Recreation. What's their hobbies? What do they do for fun? What do they do with their downtime? And dreams, what's their long-term goals? What's on their bucket list? If you know two or more facts of someone's Ford, you not only have a relationship, you own the relationship. Because to each of us, our Ford is the most important thing. It's, what, it's our hot buttons. It's what we get excited about when we are asked about. It's what we're passionate about. And when you can use Ford techniques to keep the conversation on someone else, that's when the power really happens. So the best thing to do is, is create a daily habit, a system of collecting and retrieving Ford. That could be a, a notepad that you carry, your iPhone contacts that you update, 
an app, or a database on your computer. Now, many of our clients that have call centers use a Ford desk pad. Now, however, in that environment, we don't want the customer service reps to be asking callers their Ford. That would be like a stalker checklist. <laughs> but you don't have to because so often people overshare. Someone calls in and says, I need to reschedule my 3 o'clock on Wednesday because my daughter's soccer team made it to districts. Too often, the customer service rep responds with, how about Thursday at 4? Ducking and bobbing and weaving from great Ford being thrown at us because she's too task-focused versus capturing that Ford when the client comes in at 4 o'clock on Thursday saying, how did your daughter's soccer team do? And the client responding surprisingly, how did you know? Forgetting that she ever even told us. Have you ever bought a new car so excited because you've never seen that model in that color? Until an hour later, <laughs> you see a bunch. Now, did all these other people have the same idea as you today and buy that car and that color? No. The difference is your mind is now primed to see what's always been there. And that's what good Ford techniques do. They help us hear and notice things we otherwise wouldn't have. When my oldest son, Johnny, went off to college, he called me. He said, Dad, Ford is the greatest thing ever. I was shocked. He's never listened to anything I've ever told him. <laughs> and then he goes on to say, it is amazing way to meet girls. <laughs> Glad I could help. When my boys and I travel, we play the Ford game. Who could find out the most personal information of strangers? Because it's important. I want to make sure that I'm teaching them to focus on other people and not be talking about the, themselves. But it's hilarious. My three boys are drilling the poor Uber driver, right? <laughs> or the waitress, or the bellman. But it's also amazing what we can find out in such a short amount of time. And best of all, how they light up because someone is showing interest in them. Everyone has a story to tell if we just take the time and ask. When you're able to be genuinely interested in others with the goal of building a relationship and not trying to get anything else out of them, the friendship always becomes the greatest reward. And I have found the best way to build long-term, sustainable relationships is to give more. I've tried to build my life's purpose around these two words. See, we live in a very cynical society today, and the deal is our agreement says that you're going to do A, B, and C, and I'm supposed to do X, Y, and Z. But too often, we wait we don't trust. We make sure the other person says, does what they say, and then we do what we are supposed to do. What I try to teach myself, remind myself, teach my staff, and teach my three boys is do X, Y, and Z first. And throw in W, even though W wasn't part of the deal. Give them more than the deal said. Give them more than the other person expects. That means if you borrow your neighbor's pickup truck to move furniture, Give them that truck back cleaner and with more gas than how they gave it to you. I invite you to build more meaningful relationships by focusing on other people's Ford and finding ways to give more in all your relationships. Thank you. Thank you.